Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy. In an earlier video, I investigated how far you could go on an FCC Part 15 transmitter. Again, we've got the TBS Greenhorn 25 milliwatt uh, transmitter, and again, we've got the left-handed air blade. Earlier, I made it out three quarters of a mile on this on a pepper box and didn't want to go any further due to the roadway. Well, this time around, I'm going to do a little bit of interference testing. I am now in my backyard, and hopefully you can hear me over the birds and the, uh, my neighbor's farm tractor out there baling hay. Um, but we're in a more difficult RF environment as we've got a lot more Wi-Fi, we've got a lot of houses, and we're going to go fly out over some trees out there uh, and see what kind of distance we can get. After we establish a baseline, we're going to create even more interference. This is some hack together setup with two more TBS Greenhorn 25 milliwatt transmitters. These are only 20 these are only 20 megahertz away from the transmitter that I've got on board the airplane. So we'll see how much interference we get with it right next to it. All right, again we're going to have the uh, 12, 13 dBIC left-handed pepper box to receive on this air blade and when we start interfering we're going to be interfering right hand. Uh, we're going to keep the interference fairly close so we're going to put the uh, interfering system all the way at the other end of the porch which is an entire 40 feet away maybe 20 feet away. <laughs> so uh, with that here's the test. So I'm pretty much straight out, right? Yeah. Video good? Mm hmm. Eh. Am I above the tree line? I think you are. Right? Uh, yeah, you are. You're definitely above the tree line. But the video is weak. This is a map of my intended flight path. You will see that I take the airplane first south before turning east and crossing the roadway. This is so that I can gain altitude and cross the road perpendicular so that I might make the fastest and safest transition possible for this flight. The red line is my path out. The green line is my return path. The purple arrow is the direction at which my pepper box was pointed. Now that I'm looking at the map, I realize that my pepper box was pointed 30 degrees off of my target. However, the pepper box has an incredibly wide beam, so that's why it doesn't appear that it hurt the signal all that much. I'm now about a half a mile away from my house. The snowy lines and interference you're seeing is Wi-Fi interference, mostly from my own home and my own router that's less than 40 feet away from the ground station here on my porch. So while the video is flyable, sort of, it certainly isn't very fun with this much Wi-Fi traffic. As I'm making my way towards a turnaround point, I'm noticing the airplane is handling a little bit adversely. This is because a piece of tape holding the video system down has flipped up and turned one side of the wing into a giant air brake. However, it seems to be handling good enough to continue flying, and thus I begin to reduce altitude to tease the Fresnel zone a little bit, similar to the way I did in the earlier video. At this point, I've already crossed the roadway and I'm on my way back home. I am again descending to tease the Fresnel zone after climbing to make sure I could make a safe transition across the roadway. You'll see that as I continue to get lower the, and tease the Fresnel zone, the video somehow amazingly remains fairly solid despite all the Wi-Fi traffic and now I'm breaking line of sight by the trees in my backyard. At this point, Van Gogh leaves the camera to turn on the interfering transmitters. As I'm beginning to make my turn to head back out for another run, I notice the plane is handling extremely adversely due to that loose piece of tape, and it pitches the nose high in the air. While this is making me very nervous, it is apparent that the airplane is still flyable, even though almost one-fourth of the wing is now blocked. It is interesting to note that the Wi-Fi interference at this point seems even less than it did on the first run, yet I have two interfering transmitters 20 feet away from my ground station. Admittedly, I have no explanation for this, but I'm very happy to see that now crossing one quarter mile away, I see absolutely zero interference from the interfering transmitters. 
At this point, I have crossed the roadway and I am approaching the three-quarter mile turnaround point. Admittedly, I got a bit lost here as I forgot which target I was supposed to be flying to, and Van Gogh had to point me in the right direction. As I approach the three-quarter mile mark, Van Gogh tells me the video feed is now getting a lot worse than it did on the first run, and then it suddenly goes completely out. The interfering video transmitters are now beginning to interfere with the video, yet the vehicle is at the end of the range anyway. Despite this, I decide to descend and lose altitude just as I did in the last run to tease the Fresnel zone, and as you can see, we're getting a little bit more interference as now I'm starting to block the Fresnel zone with some trees. After crossing the roadway, I dive low back down to the treetops again to tease the Fresnel zone a little bit. There doesn't appear to be any more interference this time with the interfering transmitters than last time without them. After a very successful mission, I decide to put the airplane back down in my own driveway. Okay guys, so there you have it. Uh, three quarters of a mile, um, 25 milliwatts on a pepper box, uh, just barely uh, above the tree line out there. And then again, uh, with two transmitters, 25, both 25 milliwatts using right-hand circular polarization. Once again, out just past three quarters of a mile, still had video to turn around and come back. The one thing I learned about this test is never ever ever do a test like this on a hot humid day if you wondered why my plane was flying real stupid all this tape had come off from the humidity creating an air break causing the plane to fly well not quite right but it was enough to do the test so uh, with that i hope you learned something uh, i certainly did and i'm actually very impressed that uh the receiver actually held with 20 megahertz, uh, where the bandwidth on both sides of it, uh, competing with it at the same transmit power. So it indeed is possible. That means that you can theoretically get 14 people in the air on FCC Part 15 transmitters. And a 14-person mini-quad race is something I sure as heck would like to see. I might be crazy and keep them flying.